I'm Michael Lin. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Came here to do some cosmetic work with Dr. Ye. So here we're taking a uh, CBCT of Michael, our patient, because I um, previously I did a bone graft for him in the uh, lower left quadrant, third quadrant. You can see this is a pretty fair size uh, bone graft there. But the main reason for his visit to Edmonton is to uh, complete his cosmetic work for his uh, upper front teeth. So I just finished freezing him. I'm taking some photos. Um, we're using this uh, single-use isolating device. This is a pretty useful device to keep the patient's lip and cheek away while we work. A lot of water. We use a lot of water as to not uh, as to not not to uh, heat up the teeth while we're working. I'm using a um, very fine. Um, mosquito diamond burr to remove the temporary restorations. Temporary restorations are um, because I had I had to make sure they lasted six weeks for Michael. I did spot bond them, so they are more difficult to remove than normal um, temporary restorations. They're also splint to each other, so we did the anterior four um, front teeth. So here we've, we've removed um, all the temporary restorations and you can see the, the prep prepared uh, teeth, um, which is the lateral and central incisors. So we've already tried the uh, porcelain restorations on and you just saw Michael looking in the mirror and he gives the thumbs up, um, confirming that he liked the results. I also like the results. If the patient likes the results and I don't like the results, I still don't. Um, I still don't uh, complete the case until the results are to both of our likings. Sometimes patients um, won't, will miss something and, and there'll be something that I see that they don't and um, we'll just uh, either fix that or have the case redone. In this case, um, everything looked really good. So. We are now, we're just confirming the sequence of inserting these porcelain restorations. So most of the time I'll go uh, central, central incisors, lateral incisors, canines and so forth. In this case, because of the path of insertion, um, the easiest way would have been to, is to start with the uh, upper right lateral and then work our way to the left lateral. Um, right now we're applying the yellow acid etch to the porcelain and um, essentially the, the yellow etch uh, stays on the, uh, the porcelain restoration for 60 seconds and then we rinse and dry it and then we apply the mono bond which is silenating agent. Um, you'll see Shania doing that while I'm rinsing and drying the, uh, the porcelain restoration from the yellow etch. That yellow etch, I believe, is like a 20 or 22% phosphoric acid. It's the standard porcelain etch. And here's the silenating agent uh, being applied by Shania. The silenating agent will uh, will just uh, will take 60 seconds, and we just let it air dry. We don't uh, rinse or dry it. The blue etch is the um, is the typical etch that we'll use for uh, all resin bonded restorations, whether they be fillings or porcelain restorations with resin cements. Um, we're pretty careful not to get any etch uh, onto the gingiva and when we rinse the blue etch, because it is a fairly strong acid etch, we're very careful to not get any of the 
etch on the patient's soft tissue, other soft tissue like lips or tongue or cheek or anything like that. So um, <clears throat> careful use of the air water syringe and the uh, high volume suction is very important. Here we're seeing, um, so Shania is uh, loading the porcelain restorations and I'm seeding them, <clears throat> starting with the one, two, and then progressing on to the one, one, then two, one, then two, two. So I'm trying to make sure we we make sure that uh, the restorations are fully seated. And then as we go, we, we clean up the, uh, the excess as well. So you'll see me doing this with the, with the gauze. And then the micro brush as well. And then the next step, I'll be uh, using the light curing um, tip to cure the gingival third for a couple of seconds each only, and that seals the margin so that it prevents any uh, possible saliva or blood contamination from the from the gums. And um, that can be a problem if it's not uh, done correctly. So here, um, the cement isn't fully cured interproximally or in between the teeth, so it allows us to um, still floss between and make sure that the the cement is not uh, bonding the porcelain restorations together. And, um, so now we're, we're gonna get ready for the final cure. So I'm just doing the floss, flossing step one more time, making sure we can floss in between the porcelain restorations. And so when we're ready to go, when we're happy with, the, with the everything, um, we're gonna just do the final cure. And oftentimes I'll do that with the assistant. The assistant will have her own light uh, like hearing device and so will I. And so we'll do 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds um, per tooth per, uh, on the buckle or the facial side and then again on the lingual side. So I'm just cleaning off any excess cement there. And so now, because um, Michael's come all the way from California to see us, we want to try to get uh, as much work done as possible for him. Um, we're doing the in-office whitening procedure now. Um, we do have the Zoom bleaching system. Uh, we also have other systems. I believe we're using a Sapphire, the Sapphire Light and um, bleaching system. So here I'm applying the liquid rubber dam. So the liquid rub dam is essentially a, it's almost like a resin. It's a light curing, it's a light cured uh, material that protects um, and acts as a barrier and protects the, uh, the gums, the gingiva, from um, being exposed to the bleaching agent or the peroxide agent that whitens the teeth. If this isn't done uh, properly or you miss a spot, then you risk getting uh, chemical burns on the on the gums, which leads to unnecessary discomfort for the patient. So switching glasses, so we use the, the orange safety glasses for the patient so that uh, keep their eyes healthy and safe. So um, every 15 minutes or so, I, we like to uh, reapply fresh um, whitening gel. Um, here, We've kind of sped through that, obviously. So I believe Michael is, was in the chair whitening for about an hour. And so Shai is uh, removing the cotton rolls and the uh, liquid rubber dam, which is no longer liquid.
and uh, it's, it's, it's a good material that just kind of comes off in one piece there. The patient is, is somewhat frozen from the initial uh, veneer procedure. Okay, so here I'm just taking some pictures after pictures. The experience has been great to the point that I fell asleep on the chair, so that's how comfortable I am here. 